We're going to quickly jump into lesson eight in just a minute. Before we do, we're going to review lesson seven. So we're coming across a lot of different problem types, and that's the focus of some of our lessons going forward. So you can look back at this chart at your leisure later on, but this uses the language of word problems, okay? So let's keep on moving. This chart shows exactly what was in the chart on the page right before this. Word problem types. A lot of times when we're adding, we're trying to figure out how much in all. How much in all is just another way of thinking result unknown. Sometimes we're thinking about what changes in the middle. The problem tells us how much we start with, how much we ended with, but we have to figure out that middle part. And then as problems get a little bit harder and we're still adding, we got to figure out how much there was to begin with. So remember, we think about story problems and word problems as, as stories. And stories have beginning, middle, and end. So that's the way we still organize word problems. Beginning, middle, and end. Okay, you can see all these problem types should be mastered by the end of second grade. This is another way to look at this chart, or the same information that was on the other two charts. Add to is joining. Take from is separating. And we'll skip down to comparing. Comparing, this is just like the tape diagram. This is the big number, smaller number, the difference. Sometimes we, we know the small number and the difference, but we don't know this bigger amount. And sometimes we don't know the smaller amount. Okay. When I looked at the problem set in lesson seven, I took all the questions and I organized them. These problems were joining and put together. They were the result unknown. Okay. These problems were separated and take, a, take apart problems, result unknown. Now, moving forward, we're going to look at some different problem types that might be a little more challenging. On the next slide, we're going to go to a place called Math Playground. And I like Math Playground because it has the tools here that we can use to help us model these problems. These things are called thinking blocks. Okay, I clicked on this tool right here to help me represent some problems if I want to do that going forward. Right here, these are some games I can play using thinking blocks, and thinking blocks are the same thing as tape diagrams for addition. Okay? I don't know how much more time I have on this. I'm just going to keep going and show you. Let's get started. Part, part, or part whole, two parts. So this is result in all. The problem up here, listen to it. Nina brought her collection of wind-up toys to school. She gave 26 of them to her classmates. She had 15 wind-up toys to bring home. How many wind-up toys had Nina brought to school? Okay, this is where we have to do the work. we got to go back to the text as we need to, and then we're going to put labels on here. This bar represents how much in all, okay? And I know that's going to be total the total. Amount. Total is how much in all. Now, the first part says Nina brought a collection of wind-up toys. She gave 26 to her classmate, and she had 15 to bring home. How many did she bring to school in all? So we click and drag. Here's more instructions down here. So I know she kept some, she brought some home, and she gave some to her classmates. Amount given away. And the amount she had amount left. left. That's going to be some she gave away, some she kept. All right. My time is almost up on this, so I am going to stop right here, and then I'm going to start a new um, video in just a little bit. All right.